Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I will be doing a full review of the Meta Backend Developer Professional Certificate. I am just off of recording the Front End Developer Certificate, and my throat is a little bit sore from that. I hope it doesn't die in the middle of this video. So Meta is Facebook, again, by the way, if you didn't know that, then, well, you, should, you know that now. Um, no degree or prior experience required for this certificate. So if you do want to be a backend developer, or honestly, more commonly referred to as just a developer, people don't always uh, call themselves a backend developer. Um, if you do want to do that or be that, then this is probably a good place to start because again, no experience required. You can just jump right in no matter who you are. Uh, 4.8 stars so far is phenomenal on a very small amount of ratings. This actually, I just uh, comparing the two, I see that this is about uh, half the ratings of the front end developer. So maybe people are more interested now in becoming a front end developer. I'm not so sure. They're both extremely common, uh, both very in demand as well. Taught by Meta staff. So luckily, the, uh, the people from Facebook are actually teaching you this. Very well qualified people, as I'm sure you know. So included with Coursera Plus, if you are considering uh, the front end developer certificate as well, uh, or any other sort of courses, then you may want to consider getting Coursera Plus. Um, I do have some stuff in the video description if you want, uh, if you are considering all of this stuff, those links may be helpful to you. Okay, so what will you learn? Gain the technical skills required to become a qualified backend developer. Well, I hope you'd be qualified. That, that would be unfortunate if you weren't. Learn to use programming systems including Python, Linux, Git, SQL, version control, cloud hosting, APIs, JSON, XML, and more. Okay, so a lot of, uh, lot of technical jargon here. But to break it down, uh, most importantly, this is in Python, which is um, you know a, a choice of, there's a few different choices. Uh, Node.js is also extremely common, or JavaScript, um, for, for making the back end of websites. Uh, but we're going to be using in this course, or a set of courses, Django, which is a Python library, very capable and uh, popular for doing that. Uh, Linux, so pretty much anything cloud-based or any random coding. Honestly, Linux can be tremendously useful. Uh, Git and version control are basically the same thing. Git is a way of doing version control for uh, making, well, for, for making different versions, controlling the different versions of files and storing code in a, in a way that companies would want. And honestly, just for yourself so that you uh, don't really mess anything up and you don't lose information that you had. Uh, SQL, so, you know, I'm actually a data scientist by heart, um, but, Honestly, uh, many, many, many people use SQL. So uh, data analysts, engineers, uh, data scientists, you name it, just backend developers, SQL is extremely common. Uh, you may be more in a role of actually storing the SQL or using SQL to store data uh, rather than retrieve it. As data scientists, it's very, very common that we just kind of do queries to pull data. Uh, but here you'll be very responsible for actually storing the information from users. Uh, I'm going to stop talking about all this technical jargon soon, but cloud hosting, very important, APIs, uh, all of this stuff, there, there's a reason for it. Okay, so build a portfolio using your new skills and begin interview preparation, blah, 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 a little bit of interview preparation in there as well. Again, like I said, for the front-end developer, uh, you'll probably still need a lot more, um, a lot more experience before you can do many of the interviews. Uh, but this is still a very great starting point, and I'm glad that they have a little bit in there for interviews. Uh, learn in-demand programming skills and how to confidently use code to solve problems. Um, so, yeah, they, they kind of just wanted a fourth bullet there. In programming, that's that's pretty fair. Skills you will gain, they're going to be very similar to the other ones um, and that I just talked about up here. So I'm not going to go through that again. There are 10 courses in this professional certificate. So starting with course one, introduction to backend. This is really the same as the other course in the introduction to frontend. It's an introduction to all the stuff on the web, basically. So I'm not going to go into that too much. Frontend, explain the core and underlying technologies, HTML, CSS, all the stuff that really sets you up to be a frontend developer. You really need that for a backend developer. But then we're not going to go into it too far because you don't want to specialize in this. If you are, then you're becoming a front-end developer. And that's totally fine if you want that. But from here, it's actually moving on to prog programming in Python. Uh, if you were being a front-end developer, this would definitely be JavaScript, as it is in the other set of courses. Uh, but here, we are doing Python. Um, and so all of the stuff that uh, very commonly is taught with beginner Python courses, and you'll see it in there. Perfect. 
uh, version control. So this is probably the same course as in the front end developer version control course. Um, it's all about Git and GitHub. And so once you uh, once you master these version control skills, it's usually not super hard. You can just uh, it's a little bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, um, it, these skills are very very diverse and will be useful for all of your all of your coding adventures in the future. Uh, course number four, databases. Uh, so they use MySQL here. Uh, we talk about ETL. That's what extract, transform, load is. Uh, and we also learn about data storage methods such as MongoDB and Mongoose. So all of the common database stuff, they're going to have it in that course there. We have Django. Okay, so Django is a Python library. And so they'll do a nice introduction and a little bit in-depth into the world of Django. And then you will be able to make actual websites. After course five here, uh, you, of course, want to learn more. Uh, but here, after course five, you'll have uh, a way of actually making the back end of websites, controlling that via Django. Uh, you'll have the database part with this course here, uh, version control to actually set that stuff up. Uh, and then we have, of course, programming in Python, which is setting you up for Jan Django later. Um, you also need a little bit of this here. If you do want to make a beginner website, then you should also learn this as well. So course one to five there, very, very good for setting you up to make uh, any sort of website uh, and not, not focusing you too far down the front end path. APIs, I'm not going to talk too much about these because it's rather technical, but we will very commonly see on a full stack developer or back end or sometimes even front end developer uh, resumes you will see REST or RESTful APIs because that is how really the modern web works here. You'll see that word all the time. Or seven, we have the full stack. So practice bringing together multiple skills to build a full stack Django app. We'll start by building an environment for a local project and refactoring the front and back ends of an existing application. So they're making it a little bit easier, making it so it's not super difficult to do this, uh, but learning the full stack so that you're able to make a comprehensive website. That's really the key here. Uh, and you could certainly stop at course seven um, and be pretty darn happy with this. But of course, everything they have beyond is there for a reason. Cloud computing. Uh, to be honest, without going into the cloud computing stuff, you will be left behind a little bit. And so you'll also see the term DevOps uh, also often cl closely associated with, uh, with setting up cloud stuff. Not necessarily cloud, but uh, you'll see those together pretty often. So you'll learn about the core concepts that underpin the use of containers such as Docker and Kubernetes and how they were used. So this is how stuff is deployed at scale in the world, uh, Docker and Kubernetes. And so it's awesome that they have that in there. Uh, a developer capstone, not going to talk about that too much, a nice project, and finish it off with some coding interview preparation. So much like the front end developer certificate, it, uh, it follows the set of stuff you need to learn very, very well, starting you off with uh, not too difficult um, and going further and further into the world that, you know, if you want to be a, a back end or front end developer, then these sets of course sets of courses uh, will be tremendously useful. Uh, of course, I have all the information that you might want in the description of the video if you want to take a look at that. Again, a reminder, uh, if you are considering multiple multiple courses, uh, then Coursera Plus could be a very useful option for you to, uh, to save a little bit of money. Um, with that being said, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a great day, guys, uh, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.